This is the biggest one. Okay, I get this question so much on every platform and I'm going to finally break this down for you. Okay. Hello there everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before and if you haven't, welcome. Thanks for being here. I thought that would be fun to kind of go through, not fun, but well, I'm gonna go through my most asked questions and answer them for you guys. I tend to get the same questions in Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, all the places, similar questions, and I feel like they're the most asked, so I might as well address them and answer them, and also you guys will have a chance to get to know me a little bit better, and yeah, I thought it would be good. And I'm gonna start firing away. There's only 11 here, so it shouldn't, should, it shouldn't be too long. I'm just gonna knock two out, three out of the way right away. People always ask me this. How old am I? I'm 27. I was born February 24th, 1991. I'm a Pisces. Number two, how tall am I? I am 5'10". And my number three question that people always ask me, are you Italian and what are my Italian roots? So yes, I am Italian. My last name is Di Donato and that is a very Italian last name. But oh, my Italian followers are gonna kill me. I actually do not know exactly where in Italy my ancestors are from. So my great grandfather came through Ellis Island from Italy, but I don't know where from and that's so, so bad but I am Italian, but my mother is Irish, and I'm also a little bit Native American. Another question I get a lot, the best and worst part of being a model. The best part about being a model, I think, I mean, it's changed over the years, but I feel like right now at this point in my life, my favorite part about it is the people that I get to work with, and I've gotten really lucky because I get to work with a lot of the same people, and I just get to work with really smart, creative, interesting, vivacious, colorful people. There's so many great people in this industry, and a lot of them have become my friends, and I feel like I really enjoy working with these type, the, like the kind of people that I work with, and just creating things to Together, and I like that. The worst part about being a model? Um, I would say that the worst part about being a model, or the, the part that has been the hardest for me might be the lack of structure. So as a model, you never know where you're going to be, where you're going to be going, if you're gonna be working every day for the next month, or you might not work at all in the next month. And I've realized and noticed, you know, my husband has a more, not a normal job, but he goes to work Monday through Friday and has the weekends off. And as a model, you just don't have that. Like you work Thanksgivings, you work on your birthday, you work all just whenever, wherever. I think the only days that are off limits are like Christmas and New Year's. And you also never know where you're going to be. And I feel like in general, I feel more grounded when I sort of have a routine or a more structured way of life. And that's just not something that comes with what we do. But you know, over time, I feel like it's gotten a little bit easier to get used to. But in the beginning, I just felt so crazy all the time and was like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know where I am. Like one minute I'm here and the next minute I'm there and kind of all over the place. So I'd say those are my like rose and thorn, best and worst parts of being a model. Best skincare advice. So I'm not gonna lie, I do have naturally pretty clear skin, meaning I don't get a ton of breakouts or acne, but I do have sensitive skin, meaning my skin does react to certain products or ingredients, or you know, if I'm traveling a lot, it gets irritated or dry or, you know, taking off a lot of makeup, it gets sore and red and bumpy and like all those things. But I do think that for clear skin and what makes a difference for me is it's really boring, but drinking a ton of water. I probably drink like a swell bottle this big, this big. I probably fill that up literally 10 times a day. I drink so much water and yes, I have to pee every five seconds, but it makes a difference in my skin. I think food has a big part in how my skin looks. So if I'm eating a lot of greens, drinking a lot of water, fruits, veggies, keeping away from sugar, processed foods, lots of salt really makes a difference. And also drinking a lot of coffee makes my skin kind of dry and dull. I don't know if that's everyone, but that's for me. And I also think that in general, having clear skin, you know, it's a lot to do with hormones and what's going on with your stress levels as well. So skin can be all over the place, but I feel like, oh, and another thing, my other thing that I think has made a really big difference in my skin is, and just my energy levels in general and stuff like that has been sleeping the same exact amount every night and making sure not to undersleep and not to oversleep. So 
I would sometimes sleep for like 10, 12 hours and think that was what I needed, like after a long travel day or after, I don't know, but actually I found that my magic number is like seven and a half hours. No, seriously, like exactly seven and a half hours. So I always set my alarm when I can, seven and a half hours exactly from when I go to bed. Cause over seven and a half, I feel groggy and sort of get dark circles and under that, same thing, so. I don't know, maybe that's just me. What is something difficult about the modeling industry that people don't see? Oh, that's hard. Uh, hmm, let me think about that. I think something that's sort of difficult about what we do, and it kind of goes back to what I said earlier about the lack of structure, is that we spend a lot of time alone. So you're traveling all over the world and we're always working with different people every time. Like sometimes you walk onto a set and not, not a single person even speaks English. And sometimes you walk onto a set and you just don't connect with anyone or maybe it's a totally different culture or maybe you just don't know anyone and everyone else knows each other. There's just so many scenarios but also a lot of airports, a lot of airplanes, a lot of hotel rooms and that's like the part of modeling I think people think is like awesome but actually you're just kind of there by yourself and I do believe that happiness and things that seem so great aren't even really real unless I share it with someone. I kind of feel that way. So sometimes when you're traveling somewhere great and you're alone, it just doesn't feel quite as awesome. But I've tried to take better advantage of that over the years, like when I go to unique places and be like, you know what, this is cool, this is awesome. Like, just try to take it in even if I am alone. But I do think the alone time is something maybe that people don't know. Tips for self-confidence. Um, that's a really good one and I feel like I am not always super confident. I'm just like anyone else that I have times where I don't feel good or I feel insecure. But you know, I think for me, confidence is like, I just fake it until I make it. There are so many times where I don't feel confident or I feel really insecure or I'm on set and maybe I don't know anyone or maybe they put me in a really horrible outfit and it's really unflattering or maybe the clothes don't fit or maybe, and I just feel really like, oh God, this is, I just don't, I don't feel good at all. But nobody knows that, so I try to kind of just fake it, fake the confidence, sell it that I feel great, this is gonna look great, just absolutely sell the fact that I feel amazing and I'm totally confident. And then sometimes I kind of actually trick myself into being confident. I don't know, that kind of works for me. I just try not to be like, if I just have to fake it. I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is the biggest one. Okay, I get this question so much on every platform and I'm going to finally break this down for you, okay. Why don't I do Victoria's Secret? Okay, I'm gonna tell you that it's not that interesting and it's not that crazy of a story, but so I've done the Victoria's Secret catalog years ago here and there, but it never really stuck. And the casting for the Victoria's Secret fashion show, which is a totally different thing. When I first started modeling, I would go to the casting. So from like 2009, and then probably for like a few years after that. When I would go to the casting, I would be preparing like a psychopath beforehand. I was working out a ton, like three hours a day and like eating a certain amount of food and being really obsessive. And it definitely sometimes would go on the, the gray zone of like maybe too much, but I just always was like, I really want this. Like it was a huge goal of mine. It's something that I really wanted. You know, the American girl in me was like, I just really, really want to do this. And the first three or four years that I, I would go to the casting and think, you know, hopefully this is my year. At the end of the day, they did not cast me. Like that is kind of it. Like they just never casted me, which is fine. I think that, you know, I think it's getting better now with the body diversity, but I think, you know, in 09, 2010, 2011, it was a very specific aesthetic that Victoria's Secret would cast and I don't exactly fit that and I still don't because I'm pretty much a size six and, you know, I have curves and I don't always have a six pack of abs, actually like I never do, don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, but anyway, so then a couple of years ago, after one of the castings, I just, every year, I just remember every year I would call my mom and I would just be absolutely shattered. I would just be so sad that I didn't get it and my self-worth would just plummet. I would just feel so awful about myself, so awful about my body because it's really hard not to compare yourself to the other girls and you know who did get the show and who didn't and at the end of the day it's like the actual casting process was very difficult for me emotionally and I this is I'm not blaming them like I'm kind of this is just me personally it was tough on me like mentally and 
emotionally, but walking around in your underwear and then someone being like, nah, kind of telling you you're not good enough or there's no place for you in the show. And then I would be like looking at myself in my underwear and be like, oh God, I feel like I don't look good or I'm not skinny enough. Or my waist is not small enough. And it was just like such, like my self-worth would just plummet. Like I don't know how to explain it. And I would just feel so horrible about myself. And it's like, my confidence would just be shot afterwards. And then I would watch the show and just feel worse about myself again. And I've always watched the show growing up and I'm not gonna lie, it always made me feel horrible about myself then too. You know, when I was in my awkward teenage years when I was like not cute at all and had braces and frizzy hair and was like, oh God. Like it wasn't exactly like a great thing. I don't think for anyone's self-confidence to watch, like even me as a fellow model, so I'm not gonna lie. But that's nothing against BS and like what they do. It's just like, basically it came to a point a couple of years ago I called my agent who is amazing and I was just like, I'm gonna opt out of this for a little bit. I don't think I can do it again and it just makes me feel so horrible. To be totally transparent, I don't even know if they wanted to see me either because I don't even inquire about it. Like I don't even ask my agent like, hey, the show's coming up, like should I be, can I, am I going, do they wanna see me? No idea and I don't wanna know. Oh my God, this is such a long tangent, I'm gonna wrap this up. The reason why I decided not to go was, it was I wanted to protect my mental and spiritual health in a way. That's one sector of it. But also I kind of decided to reframe what my version of success is and sort of reframe my goals and what I wanted. And I had to kind of ask myself if I get this show, this one very specific show, is my life or my career significantly going to be better? And I couldn't really answer that. It could be yes, but I was like, you know what? There are other things that I wanted to pursue and I did. And there's so many other things that I'm super proud of that I've done, like go back to school and I just got married and so many other amazing jobs and clients that I've gotten to work for and you know collaborate with. And there's just so much more. And I just basically was like, I'm gonna take a break from this and I don't even know if they wanted to see me and that's totally okay. And that's it. Wasn't a good fit, I don't know, but who knows? They could call me tomorrow and maybe I'll be there, but I don't know, that's it. But at the end of the day, sometimes they just don't cast you and I just got to a point where I was like, forget it. I'm not gonna be an angel. It's done. <laughs> okay, so I know I know that the story is not that interesting or cool, but that is the honest story. On to a happier, other, different kind of question. How did I meet my husband and how did I know he was the one? So I have answered the question about my husband like on so many different platforms. People are probably gonna be like, stop talking about this. But I will tell you again. So I met my husband on an airplane. I was flying to Colorado and he was flying to Colorado as well. Um, he was going for a ski trip and I was going for a work trip. I was going to shoot the cover of Vogue Australia. We sat next to each other, we started talking and the rest is history. We exchanged numbers and we had mutual friends and it was just like really easy. And over time, we just started hanging out like within a month and then yeah, and how did I know he was the one? He was just really kind and really caring and really hardworking and he treated me in such a way and really prioritized our relationship in a way that was like beyond any other relationship that I was in. And he really always felt like my partner and really honest and really trustworthy. Honest even when I don't wanna hear it, which sucks. <laughs> and yeah, and I always felt like I could tell him anything and he was gonna stand by my side and I still feel that way. And he's just a really strong, supportive force in my life and that's kind of how I knew. And what makes me the most happy? Okay, so what makes me most happy, I think, is being with my husband, being with my friends, being with my family, honestly, just being at home. I'm such a homebody. I love just being in like my own little bubble, like a cocoon. And also I love being in my home in New York, but also at my parents in upstate New York, like just being outside and being upstate, in the mountains, fresh air, all of those things. I just love that. And I also think I feel most happy when I'm doing like an activity outside, like skiing is something that I feel so happy and kind of can go into flow and just feel connected and not attached to a phone or anything like that and just outside, it's just amazing. So I think that's what makes me the most happy. And that is the end of my top questions that I get the most. If you have any other questions, you can write them below and I will try to answer them for you or I will do another video and answer them for you. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. I hope this was interesting to you and I hope it was a way for you guys to get to know me just a little bit better and I hope to do more videos like this in the future. But thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Seriously, do it. <laughs>